Hello viewers. I hope everyone is doing well through these uh, turbulent times we're going through. Uh, today I'm going to cut this piece of uh, quartz. Uh, I've heard it called Oro Verde quartz and also I've heard it called green gold to the people of Brazil where it's mined. Uh, I'm going to cut this oval shape which uh, it seems to be a pretty straightforward one with nothing nothing fancy and uh, hopefully this will help people that uh, struggle with an oval or it's their first time to do one and uh, the stone turned out pretty good so uh, here I've preformed it on my grinding machine, my cabochon machine, and I've got it to a nice oval shape. And uh, next I will use wax to dop it. Here I'm showing I've already gone ahead and dopped it with wax using the alcohol burner in the background there. And uh, I'm ready to go and uh, I've gone ahead and started to grind here with the 260 grit lap. And uh, I'm cutting at 43 degrees for these uh, main facets here. Here I'm showing these first four facets I've cut. And the cutting's going well. It, uh, 260 is working really good to eat up the material so it doesn't take forever to cut. Here I've gone ahead and done more of the facets and I've also uh, changed to the 600 lap. You can see it's more of a polished finish now. I've brought the uh, culet tip to a nice sharp point and uh, made sure all my facets are equal here using my loop. I'm being very careful because that's the basis for your gemstone. You want uh, those facets at the culet tip to be all exact, as close as you can get them anyway. Okay, now I've started cutting the brake facets here. You can see how they uh, come up from the bottom of the stone. And uh, they meet at the very bottom there together at the bottom of the main. You want that point to uh, be precise right there. And here I'm going to show you where I, uh, well, I'm going to, this is where you want your meat point to be. Uh, well, actually I'm showing both of those two facets meet right there at where I'm showing you, where it comes down into a V shape. That's where you have to watch. Plus, you have your other facet. When you start to cut that facet at the top here, that has to meet precisely too. So you've got two areas you have to really watch. When you're cutting, don't overcut. You have to have those meets uh, come together precisely. Uh, if you, you can sometimes cheat a little bit if you've uh, not done it quite right. And uh, here I'm going on to start the uh, the girdle facets. They start kind of from the center of the stone and work out toward the ends. So that makes this uh, design a little easier. Sometimes they you start in different areas and come in, and uh, this one it starts from the middle and works out. And uh, here I've done a few more. And I have the end, these end facets haven't been cut right there where I'm pointing. They still have to be done, but the others are pretty much done. You can see right there is a need two more facets to finish up the girdle facets. Okay, I finished the girdle facets and I've gone on to pre-polish. Here I've put a copper lap in place and I'm using 8,000 grit diamond paste 
to do the pre-polishing. And here, the pre-polishing is completed. And uh, I've done, I believe the girdle facets are done too. So next we would be moving on to polish, which would be done on a, uh, actually I left that step out because of time. Uh, I polished on a, with a cerium oxide lap. And uh, I finished the pavilion of the stone after the polishing. And here I'm going to transfer. And uh, using epoxy glue to put glue into onto the stone and then a little bit in the cone dop. And I'll let that dry for 24 hours or so. And I usually put a little more epoxy glue on the outside. I mean, like I'm doing here, a little extra. And uh, as it dries, it only takes about five minutes to start setting up so it won't run. But uh, for the first couple of minutes after you put it on, you have to uh, watch it so it doesn't start to run off. And usually I have to turn it and uh, move it like this so it, it doesn't run off and drip or run down the side and, and make more work for myself. Okay, it's the glue has dried and here I have to... Uh, remove the dop I started with, my initial dop with the wax on it. That has to be heated and removed so I can cut the crown of the stone. And uh, I wrapped wet paper towels around the stone to kind of keep it cool and keep my epoxy bond that I just made, keep that cool and uh, hopefully that won't come off the stone. So. I've heated the dop and a little bit of the wax right there and it pulls off pretty easy. Now I've gone ahead and cleaned off the excess wax because that gets into your laps and uh, some say it clogs the laps up. Uh, it, I guess it can, especially on the fine fine grits. So I've cleaned the, that off best I could with scraping it with a razor blade or something like that is what you can use. But here I have to align the stone to the to the lap and I'm using one of the girdle facets. The flat facet will lay down on the lap then you will tighten your dop set screw in your quill. So I will be looking here at this 90 degree girdle facet and that is index number two. So I will set my index at number two setting. I set my angle at 90 of course and I lay my stone down and lower the stone till it stops on the lap. It's resting level there. It, it doesn't rock back and forth. And then I tighten it down and now I have, I have lined the stone to the lap and uh, my girdle facets and my crown facets should be directly over one another and that will give you maximum brightness of your stone. Okay, I've started to cut the crown facets now. And on the crown, I'll be cutting the break facets first all the way around. Then I will be cutting the main facets after that. Here you can see I'm starting on these first two uh, break facets. And here I've gone on around and cut all of the, I believe I've gotten all the break facets cut here. And uh, this is where you size your girdle width. I could have gone to a smaller girdle, but uh, that, that looks good to me right there. If this was a competition stone, it uh, the judges would be calling for a smaller girdle than this, and then I'd have to get out my measuring devices, and I use a feeler gauge for the, what's called a feeler gauge for that, and I would have to be right within the judges' tolerances. Okay, here I've started on the main facets and these facets will come down from the top when you're cutting. 
and you could see those I've gotten one one done and I'm starting on another one that you want it just to touch the girdle or just barely touch the girdle and that's where you stop that's your meet point so I've got to go all the way around and cut eight of those this one I've on that second one I'm bringing it on down and I'm still cutting with a 600 lap right now okay I think at this point I've gone all the way around and cut all of the main facets I believe I have them all done here yes so the next point would be to cut the star facets the star facets that are, are next are at a higher angle. Here I've started cutting the uh, star facets. Started the first one. Seems like that was an 18 degree angle if I remember right. The steeper angle you get, the, the harder it is to, to make the cut accurately and you can get into trouble sometimes on these steep angles. Most of the time you'll be all right, but at times the steep angles can, they can give you a little trouble. And it's coming down very good. Anyway, now I have finished those and I am going to start pre-polishing all of those facets I've cut so far using the same copper lap with an 8000 grit compound. And it's all looking really good. The polish came out really nice. The pre-polish, I mean, mean to say. And uh, I'm using Gearloose uh, Pandemonium products for pre for my uh, diamond compounds, and I, I have good luck with it. Okay, here. We have all of the uh, facets pre-polished, except for the table, which hasn't been cut yet. The table is the last facet I cut on most all my stones. And I, for reason for uh, reasons that, for time's sake, I do not show much at all of the. Uh, polishing of the stone. This is a completed stone right here. I, I didn't show the table being cut and polished. I didn't show the polishing, but it is completely polished. So you'll have to check some of my other videos if you wanted to see the table being cut or the polishing being done. But I was running short of time and getting this video done for, due to other matters. So uh, here I'm uh, going to release the stone from the dop. And what I do is I heat a knife in the, uh, the flame and get it hot. And I can trim back the epoxy glue very easily with a hot knife. And I heat the dop a little bit and I heat the, the glue just a little bit too. But you got to be careful with stones. Even I've even had trouble with quartz stones. When I was initially dopping, I uh, the stone gets hot and it, it can crack sometimes. Not all the way through, but you, I saw a crack develop a while while back on a piece of quartz. I guess I got it a little too hot, so I had to. I didn't continue with that stone, but here I've got it hot enough. It it just pulls right free from the dop and uh, I'll clean it up and uh, I soak it in some acetone to release the, the uh, leftover glue. Here is the finished gemstone and this once again is called an oval Br brilliant 45. And this is lemon quartz again. And here's a shot outside with daylight.
and I was pretty happy with this this stone. This is probably uh, the uh, an oval design I will use mostly if I need to do an oval for something, you know. But uh, actually, that's kind of a this colored stone, this Oro Verde quartz is. I I prefer darker. A citrine or a darker quartz instead of this so here it is against a back my wall <laughs> of the wall of the building any it just gives a different view and the light kind of reflects off the wall I think and gives a, a different view of the stone that's why I show it on against the wall here and we have a final weighing of 13 carats for this stone and I believe this stone was about 18 by 14 or 15, I believe it was. Okay, thanks for watching and please subscribe and like this.